So you say something stupid, you'll be like, yeah, but by the way. <laughs> oh, you know what's weird? I used to, I'm actually still conflicted because I used to have, um, look what I used to have. I have uh, a Zoom X6 and for, for a long time. No, why, why must one man have so much tech? Like, co- no, I, before I knew of this, yeah. that's what I had. So I had the H6. And, nice. we, and I used to love it so much because when we recorded um, Southern Morning, I would just carry my days. I time when summer gets, yeah. just plug in four batteries, recharge your balls, and then plug in our two microphones. And then just start how much was it like in those days? Huh? How much was it? Zoom H6? Uh, I think it was about $400. Never really changes. I think it's two years around. Yeah, like but three, 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 like there's some ceremonies are not Ura, the solution center, and those are 600. I, I, I don't go there. We did today, actually. I, I don't go there. See, I, I go to Solution Center just to remind myself what normal life is like. And what, what, the cutoff. I was working with my wife, uh, pa, um, pa Semilev, and my sleeve, yeah, pa MacBook, is torn. Like, I, 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 I don't know what I did, but, like, it's clipped. Yep. So I was like, oh, babe, I, I need a new sleeve. Because I'm very afraid of it getting my scratch and whatever. She was like, ah, let me know. So I was like, before we enter, I was like, these people don't fear God. What do I keep saying about those guys? <laughs> these, people, my... these people don't fear God. And she was like, they can't be that bad. Mm-hmm. They can't be that bad. The one that I have, I bought it on Amazon for $10. Yeah. Right? We, we go there, I was like, watch this. I even told the the the, the lady at the tell, I was like, yo, my I'm having an argument with my wife. She thinks you guys are reasonable. Mm. Like, that's what I said. She, she <laughs> thinks you guys are reasonable. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. We're asking to show like $40. Zim text. And you know, the, the crazy thing is, I don't think she got what was happening. She even went as far as she's like, yeah, let me show you. They're like, we're not buying it. <laughs> it's 40 bucks. We're, we're not buying it. I, I, I will let it. I will let it cheap. But yeah, my price, my price, my price. I can imagine could you, if... Like how much I I'm, I'm afraid of even asking how much do they even sell like something like a like the latest MacBook Pros? There must that be like five thousand or something. It was three thousand five hundred forty nine, but I wasn't looking. Yeah, but my chest pain. Send and I see I can't afford this. Wow. What did you? But how did they charge? No, but no, but how? Wait, which one? Like what? What's the spec on on it? Yeah, I'm not sure. Check the specs. But it's it's have an M1 because I have an M1 Intel. I think they have Intel. Wait, they don't have the M1. They have the, they only have M1s. They don't have the Intel ones. Okay. Yeah. So if you're looking for Intel Macs, they don't have any more. But it's kind of the thing because Mac is moving away from Intel. Yeah. So yeah. It makes sense. I'm actually thinking that if they're selling it for three point five, that might actually be better than what I expected them to be selling it for. Wait, how can it, how can it be better? Three grand is a lot for a laptop that goes for one point something. Mm. Where it goes, where mm. things are you No, because. So it's Apple in the UK is expensive. That's a weird thing for to explain. But so when you know how when they come, when things come out and like Apple says like six ninety nine, yeah, UK it's six ninety nine in pounds. pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so it, exactly. So they don't convert anything. They don't make it cheaper. <laughs> they, can I get six ninety nine? It's six ninety nine. So the 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 new computers are like uh, they're like two point seven nine nine. Yeah, they will be two point seven nine nine pounds. <laughs> it's a great direct translation. It, 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 like they don't play that game. Damn. I remember. I I'm still confused as to what the reasoning is. So the uh, the one that I have, I got it for. I I was I it's the dumbest thing that I ever did because mm. I wasn't following tech news. Um, I had a um, I had a. Um, I had a 2018 MacBook prior to the one that I have now. Mm. And when I started doing propaganda, we were dealing with 4K footage and all that. Boy, was it stuttering. <laughs> like there was, a, there was a time when I left it rendering mm. around 4 a.m. I woke up at 11 and it was 32% done. So I was like, you know what? Might be time we've been together. We've might be time to upgrade. Uh, so I got the one that I have now. Do these bastards not drop a new one in September? And then when I went on the website to say, let me trade in, they say we'll give you 700 pounds. Damn. <laughs> I, I've, uh, 
So to this day, I, 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 no, I I'm the beauty of the UK is that depreciation is real. You go yeah. over when you drive off the lot of the car. Yeah, you already know what the dollars are coming off. Yeah, in Zimbabwe, that I wonder if it's year nineteen ninety chabu diga. It will be three grand per Facebook marketplace. Yeah, yeah. In Africa, it said yani mi. Yans go mi. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Kuvendi zika urubwa value chino. Yeah. As time goes on, because when the next model comes out, obviously this is not going to be expensive. Yeah. You uh, what was the Samsung A six or J six? Oh, that was an A fifty one. A fifty one. Six hundred bucks. What? It's not, it's, not even the, it's not even a mid ranger. Nah. I saw I saw I saw someone selling an iPhone 13 for was it what was it? Was it 5000 5, They even put it like 91 cents. I was like, "Why?" <laughs> I like why yeah. now that shows commitment to the numbers. They're like, now nah, well, I need, I need to make it look like I calculated something here. But you know, BS is BS. You can tell from a mile away what to do it. There's no, there's no way no one's gonna buy that. And whoever buys that has more money than sense. I, everyone that, when 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 I was, when I was, which is, I don't know why I'm using past tense, like I've been gone for that long. Oh, please. And you like, go to the yeah, diaspora, you feel that play. Yeah, no, but, <laughs> but I used to justify anyone who was doing better than me. I used to say it was money laundering. A- anyone. <laughs> <laughs> anyone. Anyone who was doing, like, I see anyone driving a top of the range in Mercedes, hmm. and I can't explain why, how, <laughs> money laundering. Anyone who has uh, iPhone ever done us, you have it next month, money laundering. Because and you know, as much as I would joke, there is certain things that you can't explain, yeah. right? Like it's like there is. I can't say where we are because then it would make what I'm talking about very obvious. But there's a car sale, right? Mm. That only sells top of the range vehicles. You're not going to find. I don't even, not even, like, a wonder fit is not even, like, in on their mind. You're not even going to find, like, well. A Fortuner, a Toyota Fortuner is below class. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, that would be the cheapest vehicle yeah. in that car. <laughs> but, but, hmm. the vehicles of their castles, they don't, they don't stay. You know how, like, castles in Masasa, I've been seeing the same cars. Since I've been using Robert Mga. Yes. They they don't people are coming in and driving away with sixty thousand, eighty thousand, hundred thousand. And I'm like, yo, am I broke or No, you're broke. <laughs> no, because remember yesterday <laughs> because I, I was actually talking to a friend of mine. He sent me a tweet by Rangamberi uh, from mm. Newswire saying that my classes are Ruago in Zimbabwe. Yeah. How are people selling them? Three hundred and seventy K and I'm like, You guys have never been north and north and north of somewhere, yeah. right? Let me humble brag. That is my hood. <laughs> humble brag. That yeah, is yeah, my yeah. Hood. And to be honest, people have, have money. money. Yeah. Like Zimbabweans are rich. Y'all think, y'all think that people building <laughs> clusters can't afford them. Yeah. People are paying three grand for rent comfortably because they can. To you, that's school fees in yeah. one St. John's three point three per yeah. term. To you, that's a down payment for a car. Yeah. To them, it's paper. It's just something that they have that they're going to throw away for the month, just so that they can have a convenience of living in a safe area. And I lived in one of these gated communities, and I'll be honest with you, guys. Mm. Yeah, listen, it's worth it. Like on on the premium range, yeah, it's worth it because everything is given to you. There's nothing that you have to worry about as as, as a tenant. You yeah. just live. Every like people come mow the lawn, people come sweep, people ask if you're alright. If there's a break in, there's a panic panic button in every room. It's beautifully laid out. There's a generator that comes on. There's solar if you want it to kit it out for your place. So mm. people have money. Is that the perception? Of the, the gap between you. Yeah. And that object is so wide that you think it's impossible. But for someone, it's pocket change. But it should be. It, it should be impossible, though. It should be impossible, in, in especially in in a society like ours, where the discrepancy. I mean, not in terms of if you're working hard, yeah. right? If you're working hard, you and warima watenga safuji yako. But the problem that we have now is the people that can afford to live in these, to a greater extent, get in communities, are people that are intentionally making life hard for the rest of Zimbabwe. But that's not the case, though. I think it's people who see opportunity. 
Because if you look everyone, at it, no, but look at it. Look, look at it like you, right? Mm. People would never have assumed you're living the life that you live. So, comedian out there in Zimbabwe, classically, mm. that is a career path that has no money. Magitara Abadari is the, what we were told as kids. Go to university, get your degree, don't come an entertainer. That was the modus operandi. Yeah, but the but difference between you and everybody else is that you saw the opportunity that no one else could see. No, but you bring you bring up a brilliant point. First of all, to demystify the whole Magitara Abadari. Mm. That's the biggest lie. Obvious. That's the biggest lie. And I'm actually, that is the most disappointing lie because... The reason, I think subconsciously, the reason why I chose to get into entertainment was a combination of several reasons. Mm. I remember coming across an article that says uh, Alec Macheso changed his property in January. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, I don't need this thing. But my point in that is the whole my guitar abadari thing, to, I know it's a jump off from the conversation that we're not even supposed to be having of to course. begin with. Yeah. But we are here now. <laughs> Magdala Abadare is one of the biggest lies that has been said in Sean. The reason why I say that is everyone that we've looked up to, from young to our parents to an green, all of them, a good, not all of them, a good 80% have been entertainment in some shape or form. Mm. And the reason why they were being looked up to is because they were doing well. The conversation that people need to have or that we should be having, it's not so much with Magitara Abadari, but Badrakwashu doesn't lead to like there is no you know financial literacy, there is no sustainability, there is yeah. no but that's that's a very boring conversation. That's that that no, it's, it's not though. Yeah, no, it's it, very boring. It's not boring. Because look at it like this. You, it's very sad, bro. No, it is. Because remember the Bunda Boy story. Yeah. Like when I watched that, yeah. And I saw Kune and Sungura Classics on Twitter. Yeah. They did a thread about it. Uh, yeah. my goodness. They had man. a house in London. That everything was going for them until things bro, just went pear shaped. That, that's what I'm saying. Like that's the kind of money that if people know better, it sustains generations. Mm. Right? It's the kind of money that can build a whole industry. Like based off the success of Bundu Boys, that should have brought Universal, that should have brought Sony. Say, okay, let's go get another Bundu Boys from these guys. Yeah. Right? It leads to the the fact you could see the fact you could see Kunoku just across uh, the river in South Africa. There is Sony, there is Universal, there is all these guys. Kunoku, there is Atina. Can I choose Sport Chago doesn't have my I'm, contracts. I'm right and one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, one, yeah. the, grammar records, when as them see mm. all their catalogs, they're struggling to sell them. Mm. They're struggling to sell the premises right now. That kind of thing, you wouldn't know where the problem should be. Where because that conversation is not being held, it leads to people just saying to Hama Gitara Abadar. But that's not true. Look at the money that Japreza has now. Japreza, not okay. Japreza might be an easy example. Okay. Look at Tuku. Yeah. Tuku built a art center. But but Tuku, Tuku's model to music was a lot was a lot different because. No. No, but I'm I'm yeah, just no, looking true. around a superficial yeah, level yeah. of saying he's a Zimbabwean artist yeah, that that did very well. Yeah. But the problem now, because there is no industry to speak of, there is a danger that Pakare Pai might die. Yeah. Because he died. Which is the issue with everything that we've had. Kuti, as soon as somebody dies, that person goes with their ideas. As soon as this building, as soon as the visionary who came up with whatever, things start, you know, the hardwood floors start getting... No one has... We don't have people that are no, following to but, but I, mean, I think I think that's a that's a continuity problem that mm. future like uh, previous African generations have had with younger generations mm. is that trust with with the handover yeah. of of not just power but responsibility. Yeah. So power comes later. It's responsibility to trust your kids when they're 16, 17 with enough responsibility to know that they will take over comfortably what you're doing. Mm. So when things die <clears throat> like what almost happened to the Chimbetu Empire. Yeah. The Dembo Empire. Mm. Those things disappeared. Exactly. I mean, the, the 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 music of it. You know, these things. He should have gotten the rights to his music. They they should have been on. They're on some streaming services. Mm. But I mean, the continuity of it was never handed down. Yeah. Properly to the next. To, not to hand it down, but to be like, at some point while I'm alive, you'll be responsible for what I'm doing. Which and brings us to politics. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, 
<laughs> we're like midway in the conversation. Yeah, but I'm but Valentine Mwamba, editor at Texim. I'm joined by King Kandoro, comedian, yeah, yeah. Uh, content creator, creative director at Madorofia FM. He's just a man about town. Uh, he's in Zim and uh, decided that he wanted to. Don't say that. Don't, say, don't tell me. Tidipa Zoom. Tidipa Zoom. Don't say, I'm here. Here. Aripo. Here and Diripo. Aripo. So he. he, he not graciously, we accommodated him when he wanted the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I needed exposure. <laughs> <laughs> needed some exposure. So yeah. if you missed it, he was on his tour, um, the Prodigal Sun tour. Uh, I'm, I'm even embarrassed to call it a tour because it was just two dates. No, but, but, but it's the two important. Yeah, cities. it was. It was it, it, everything else, Kumusha. <laughs> I, d- <laughs> I, <said it. laughs> I didn't say it. You guys saw my lips. I didn't say anything. In that but yeah, man, I know that, that was a fun time. Um, yeah, uh, mm. yeah. So, like I did number. <laughs> Six three six. Stroke. But yeah, no. Uh, thank you guys for having me. I'm very, 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 very excited to, you know, I, I can already tell with this. This is going to be one special conversation. So only doing how many minutes now? Yeah, I think we're done an hour mm-hmm. and <laughs> an hour and forty five. But, but we're only starting. We're to only say starting now. Hi guys. To now. make introductions, man. Um. So, well, I, we me and Ed went to the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, we enjoyed ourselves. Um, Thank you. And Thank it was you. a really, really good experience. Thank you. Um. So I wrote, I wrote a review about it. I, yeah. I didn't write it as. I want my one star. You gave four point five. I want. Where did the other star go? I want. I got to run another pro bits. Pro bits are going to be going to bore us. I know. I want. I want the other star. No, nah, thank the, you guys. The, the four stars was basically because of level of organization number one. Mm. To get when I saw the auditorium, I didn't think would have one because they're going to have Right. Like when you see Avondale packed out parking, you know yeah. where people are going to come. Yeah. And I saw people coming in an hour and a half after things had started. Yeah. And th- just getting that place, how everything moves smoothly, the opening yeah. at Munya was hilarious. Well, I, I didn't laugh too much at it because I was making snarky jokes in my head. Yeah. I was just being a dick in my head, but I was mm. like, yeah, okay. She's fine. Yeah, yeah. She's incredible. She, she, she's... Yeah. The way she ended the show, though, like... Yeah. I I didn't I w- I'm going to have to actually watch the footage because I didn't get to see it. Oh, yeah. I could only hear, like, the, the, the feedback, but I was... Deep in my head, oh, trying to make sure, and there were other things happening in the background. You know, I actually wanted to come backstage, right? yeah, and then be like, "Let's do that." You know, one minute before you go on, yeah. like get a camera in your face. It was, like, it was, it was, it's very different from you know how like when you see post production people come before stay before before the show, cracking jokes. There's none of that happening. <laughs> <laughs> There's none of that. There's happening. no Xbox. There's no. If I tell Xbox. you the ten minutes before the show. I was running up on the roof yes, seven nuts because somebody had come to tell me could you, they were denying people entrance at the gate because somebody said could and they were denying. So I was running because I could foresee Twitter threads upon threads <laughs> <laughs> on how people were denied after they had paid. So I was like, what are you? I was running. I was, I was half dressed. So I had the I had the the jeans I had the shoes mm-hmm. I had my Man United jersey so I was running I was, and you know the, the shoes that I was wearing they are very heavy yeah. right mm. <sighs> I ran so the whole time Probits was now performing I was trying to calm myself down because I was sweating now so I was trying so but we wouldn't have been able to get whatever. <laughs> it would have been fun though to, to, to run out like with you running after you be like yeah yeah and if then, we had if we had planned it it would have been some fun footage but it just happened that would it, be crazy it just happened I wish we had planned something crazy like but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just glad could he, you know it didn't show on stage could I had been running I oh, hope no. it didn't show it didn't like when you came out <laughs> you looked like someone who had been you know had just come from your masseuse. Um, mm. <laughs> and, and, a, and, and a couple of quaaludes just to get you, in, get you, get you squeezed into the show. Man, I, I wish, I wish. Hopefully one day we get to that stage. Where we can afford quaaludes yeah, for shows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I enjoy the crap out of the show. Um, yeah. more, more the second half, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Because I... So my Mount Rushmore of comedians is... Um, Richard Pryor, Bill Burr, Dave Chappelle, mm. and I'll probably say Norm MacDonald yeah. are my four Mount Rush, Rushmore yeah, comedians. Yeah. And actually, sorry, George Carlin, yeah. uh, not Norm MacDonald, God rest his soul. But I mean, 
they w- were very politically poignant in their yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, George Collins more against the fanaticism of evangelistic religion in America. Mm. Dave Chappelle is a little weird this, these days. I mean, yeah, Team yeah. Turf, and I was like, yeah, okay. Uh, my favorite is Bill Burr because he's the most honest when it comes to politics. Mm. He knows he doesn't understand it, yeah, but he always has something to say, and it's always hilarious because it's from his crazy, agitated Bostonian point of view. Yeah. So when you brought up Nick Mangwan, I, I immediately said, "I'm like, this is going to be good. Yeah, this is going to be good." Yeah. Homeboy has been a menace for years. <sighs> <laughs> That guy. And that is the only part of the show. That is the only part of the show that wasn't written. Wait, seriously? That whole part. Because it happened in... So uh, how it happened is I was doing the show in blues, right? And I said something about Nick Mangwana and the crowd reacted. And I was like, oh, snap. These people don't like this guy as much as I do. And then I just started going off (laughs) about this guy. Like things were just... I couldn't stop. And it wasn't it wasn't part of the show at all. So I had it in my mind. I, I was of the mind like, should I write? I was like, nah, let's just be honest. Because that, that part, I didn't care whether it was funny. I just wanted to speak my truth about, you know, it just happened that the stuff was funny. So, mm. you know, I, I, I just knew the parts where I left blank. I was like, okay, this part before we get to, because... The Nick Mangwana part is just before the show enters, like the third act. Mm. So I just knew, like this part is 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 is, is empty. It just says Nick Mangwana. Mm. So when we will deal with it when we get there. And yeah, he's been a menace, man. Yeah. He's 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 really he's really gone out of his way. It's almost like he wants to, like, in terms of notoriety. <coughs> catch up with 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 pe- things that people were doing from 1980 because I don't get it. I honestly don't get it by ear. Yeah, yeah he's, a, he's what we call is what I like to call. I mean, I wouldn't say no disrespect because as information secretary, your job is to disseminate information. But the manner with which you do it causes so much panic and friction. So people remember e passports, right? Mm. We remember the night in July when he said mobile money was suspended. Now, I want you to understand, I, this was my first, second month at Texan. Yeah. I see it on Twitter, and everyone in the group, what the hell? Yeah. Because for so many businesses and so many people, mobile money has become a way of, of life. Not for so many. It's the only way. It's the only way of it's life. It's the only way. No one is existing on cash. Really. Yeah, so when you... Here's my thing. Here's my problem with, with, with Nick. And I, and I get don't beat the messenger because unfortunately sometimes he's just a person who delivers the message. Mm. But I mean, doesn't he go back to his homies and like, guys, timelines. I don't know if you're but because, yo. But you see, that's the, I, I, I thought that as well, right? Mm. And you almost want to give him, you almost want to give him reprieve over, you're just the messenger. But then I realized, no, he's not just the messenger. Right, mm. because even when you are the messenger, right, you communicate things in a way that will let people know that I'm just the messenger. Yeah. You see the way that he structures information. He takes pride <laughs> in the confusion that comes out of like he's taking pride. Yeah. Like if if we've you've seen people that have been sent to communicate, bad, you do it sheepishly. You yeah. almost don't want to do yeah. it, right? Yeah. Whether it's Munawak the communicator, news the Gucci. Go tell good Aquafi, Wakweta say say you beat around the bush, so we're going to wanna numbers because it's bad news. Mm. You don't do it. Like look at the way that he communicated the whole um <coughs> look at the way he communicated the whole <coughs> quarantine situation. Yeah. Right? <coughs> when you're just the messenger, Nick Mangwana sent out that announcement before the president did. Mm. Right? Mm. Then what was the point of the president even communicating the thing? Because we've already been told what he will be communicating. Like if you are the guy that wants to be the messenger, you let the president communicate. Yeah. And then you come and placate the audience because there's going to be confusion still. Mm-hmm. So we were confused twice in one night. Because <laughs> Nick Mangwana came and said, people are going to have to quarantine regardless of their PCR test being negative. Mm. Right, if you're coming from ABC, 
for 10 days and you're going to announce. So people are confused, like, what? So what's the point of a PCR test? What's the point of being vaccinated? Mm. And where are these where are these vaccine centers? When does this start? Is this starting immediately? Is this, right? Mm. This is around 4 p.m., 5 p.m. At 8 p.m., the president, via press conference, communicates the same thing word for word. So what is the point? Mm-hmm. It doesn't explain anything. It doesn't make it. It's, it doesn't have new information. And for the next ten days, there is no explanation as to the questions that these people are, are now asking. Okay, so what? What do you mean? How much is the PCR test at the airport? Okay, so where am I going? How do I? Oh, 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 uh, bro, the amount of people that cancelled flights, mm-hmm. the amount of people that missed seeing their loved ones who were probably on their deathbeds people that they hadn't seen in over two years, in over 18 months, because they couldn't afford. It It wasn't a financial thing. I remember him saying, oh, if you can afford to come to Zim in December, you can afford booking a hotel. Nick Mangwa, is that, is that the hill that you want to die on? <laughs> well, it's the one he's been dying on for a really long time now. Because I don't think he, he factors in the fact that we as people, look at the passports. You can't tell Munaga about 300 bucks for an emergency passport. But you've only got a year to use it before you have to pay another 200 bucks for another emergency passport. You can't deal with our wallets like that. How's moments they do? Could you know that 300 bucks here might have been a one time purchase that was necessary because couldn't change that we outside, right? Bro, not could he and 300 dollars you ain't gonna save it when a whole community, a whole village, my 10 dollars, 10 dollars, you could eat 300. And I bought it one push it for that within a year. But what frustrates me more, when I think you touched on it, is no one then answers every query that comes in his, in his, in his mentions. Mm. No one comes back and be like, okay, this is this. Here's the price list for this. It's guys like us who now have to mm. start making calls. Yeah. Yo, guys, you know, what, how much the passport is going to cost? What, what is this? When the e-passport thing dropped, <clears throat> to be honest, most people didn't know what an e-passport was. That's the thing. People thought it was a digital passport. That's the thing. Like people thought it was a PDF. <laughs> <laughs> like a literal <laughs> digital passport. And then I remember when I was in uni, and I used to see, you know, that thing on, on the bottom of the digital passports. Yeah. With my friends who lived in the EU. So they need, didn't even need to carry passports. They carried the IDs to cross borders, except from, from Ukraine, because yeah. Ukraine had, to, had your passport. But I've been in an area where I bought. Well, you, just, yeah. you just roam around. So they showed me the passport and then told me what the passport was. It, like what it is. It's just a passport with a chip. It's just a backup for your information. So it's harder to, to, to think. So the way thing is, when I looked at the stats and I was looking at the people opening, it's one of those articles that I wrote and left, because it was from experience. You've seen this crap, right? Let me. You, this is what it is for those who are asking what it is. Mm. God, the way you see people, I'm like, wait, y'all serious? Did not did not know this was. But, but you see, that's the thing where it's not so much that people didn't know the communication. But you haven't given people an opportunity to react yeah. in a way. So it's kind of like even if you were to say, Guti, if you were to come here and say, Guti, eh, gates. Mm. Effectively, you made it. <laughs> Hacha booms in my guess. I don't know. Even if it's for climate purposes, and you're saying, if the reasoning is uh, we are going to be promoting solar energy, we're mm. going to be, you know, uh, green, chakadaro, chakadaro. If you don't communi- if you communicate it in a way that it can only allow reactionary, people are going to start panicking. It's not. Uh, Crazy man, and it's, it's, it's weird that articles written by other people, second hand information, is more useful than the primary source. Why not communicate what that is? What did that video of the e passport have anything to do with anything? Because he's taking pride in, 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 in causing that panic. <clears throat> now, if bro, information is easily the, the thing that makes or breaks a nation, yep. Right, information is easily the thing that that I think we, I think we, sp- we did an episode on propaganda about you know how Zanu PF allegedly wins elections, mm. right? And when we were doing the research about that, it, it it easily came back to information, like just being in control of you know state apparatus that allows, and this is one of the ways, mm. right? If you are if you Nick Mangwana is easily one of the most powerful people in the nation. No doubt. People don't people don't realize how powerful he is because mm. he is the brand ambassador of the government. Wow. 
he is the brand ambassador you can talk about chris mtangwa and shit but he is the whenever people hear rumor about the country people go to that twitter handle to okay. confirm mm. has he tweeted about it has he said anything about mm. it has he you know he's the brand ambassador of the government mm. that before him it was george charamba that man has the power to say things that haven't happened that are not going to happen and say oops and he has done it before mm. you know so when you are that powerful it comes with this goes without saying it comes with a lot of responsibility oh yeah because look at where we're going now we're going into election election period yeah. right there's already there's already issues about how certain people are getting leeways in terms of how they move in terms of how certain events are happening in terms of how so imagine a situation whereby you have this guy with all this power but doesn't have the responsibility that comes with it but then you start realizing that no this is not in discipline this is intentional mm. there's almost an intentionality to it where the chaos is designed in a certain way for a certain outcome mm. right if there is enough chaos people will be distracted enough to just recently they do they not put out states of what is it registration. registration and then they were made in yesterday and it's 2300 something i'm like 2000 does not it doesn't cross over the fact that it's inaccessible There are two buildings in Zimbabwe. I remember berating this the guys in the editorial meeting and I was like, mm. guys, but there are two more buildings in Marare to be registered to vote. Marare mnano ngani? 6 million people not to magnetize these two buildings to register to vote. Okay, my my satellite programs are written as well. But why not why not number one, just have something like online voter registration? I know it's a little bit beyond the point, but why not have things like that? But you see that information is communicated to do what? chaos and then your buddha and then it's a joke and then it distracts so so much is happening in the undertone we don't get with the he, 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 if you remember the tweet where he actually shared the 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 voter register with the men and stuff, women and stuff yeah. he was he I, i i might be paraphrasing no i'm not good at might i am paraphrasing but it was to the effect of ha, with all the noise that you guys have been making about voter registration these are the numbers of voter registration and then Here's the thing that I don't know whether they realize or not but you're the minister of information for the government why are you celebrating that there's poor voter registration why are you celebrating that there is poor voter Be- why I, I, do you see what that is communicating yeah it's like you you don't want it to, to happen what, it, you don't want that why are you cel- that, that that was the whole thing that yeah. like why are you s- This should be worrying yeah, could to be. you. Zimbabweans, why are you not registering? Because if elections. you've been communicating to people that you guys have been doing work. If you guys have been saying that you've been working as hard, you've been fixing A B C D, why are you celebrating that people are not registering to vote? Like why is that a thing? It should be concerning because your 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 electorate is going away. Your your, your you, base is going away. So you need more people to file in. I you know what? Yeah. I think I there's one thing i always tell myself when i talk about people in power you never truly understand what it's like to be in the halls of power there are things that change you professor mtudi nube for example i don't know if this is verbatim but that man when he came in spoke in a different manner he, he spoke like from from another world like the the way he was talking about cryptocurrencies and this this and that and then he came and then he followed the the the, the, the to the company line and there are so many things we don't know and we can't appreciate and we don't know the gravity of Mm. because remember every single administration gets legacy from the previous one mm. so some it might be in essence difficult to, to weed out some of these things might be let i'm going to say this generously might even annoy them but it might be the course of things in which they can't alter but with Nick Mangwan is different it's like he's been waiting for this like this is his moment you, you, even truly i wouldn't i wouldn't give him that much leeway because i have uh, about people these things that people do by trigger bus sure i i you are going to my wedding here no these things that people do by trigger bus and then these things that people uh, these things that you did before you joined texim yeah right now you're texim would you say you are different from that guy 
before he joined takes them. No. It's nothing to do with the job. But if you, bro, can I ask you about One of my ideas is that we will be great. We should have a graph to be one of our new. That's not going to be plans. You leave that job. True. But can I ask you about the moon? I should never have a new. That will be great. We should have it as we should get to one of our now. We don't go to Tanga. I've watched in. Do you know, see, the thing about. The thing about. So when I left when I left school right to come to to do comedy there are things that I promised myself could I would never I would never make fun of mm. and that was I told myself cuz I was coming from 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 a place where you know everything is taken seriously like I was studying law right so before i even decided that i want to do this drastic turn i realized you know being funny is the one thing that i'm undeniably good at yeah. i was doing all this research about the kind of comedy that i enjoyed the kind of you know what i wanted oh can i do this can i and i realized i was like yo let me just make some guiding principles that i can kind of use because i was also looking at you know what was happening in zim this is 2015 and I told myself that I would never make jokes about things that didn't matter to me. Mm. And what that meant was I would you know Madizo wa pipe ni sanya za jiguta. Everybody had a chiguta joke, everybody had a jiguta fire video. And I told myself I, I never want to do anything to go viral. Mm. Something goes viral that would be an accidental result of something being really funny or this or being stupid, but I don't want to make viral stuff. I want to make stuff that resonate if it's with one person. Mm. I want to speak that so I started looking intentionally looking for for people that would enable me in that way. And naturally I ended up in this satirical place where, you know, it's just satire is my thing. Mm. That's how I ended up, you know, linking up with guys in Magamba and all that because that became that became my university. Right? The thing that I've always taken pride in is I try to do as much research in my stand up as I possibly can because the one thing that I dislike is speaking out of turn mm. or speaking about something and then it turning out to be false. So if you come to a show and you hear me speaking about Cecil John Rhodes or if you hear me mention something that even is remotely close to effect there's a high likelihood that that thing is true. Mm. And I'm saying that to say I've watched enough Mtuli Ngobe videos <laughs> to know that man is not the same man that we saw prior to 2017. And I don't know whether that's because the person that we saw prior to 2017 was a figment or was a makeshift person to fit the you know he was writing these up ads about what he would do about what 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 you got his accent yeah you know open the ding recently recently there is the the link interview with the uh, Ruveneko mm. where he's saying the most lies that anyone has ever said in a 30 minute video <laughs> this man said You know, it's very worrying to hear a minister of finance who's not an MP, who's not an official politician lying because you, in my mind I'm thinking you don't need to like I would understand I would understand Patrick Namasa as minister of finance lying because mm. he was an MP of somewhere mm. so that means his power his positioning is backed up by some somewhere that needs votes somewhere mm. that needs him to be elected and so Mtuli Ngobe is just the minister of finance he's not an mp of anything he's he supposedly got there because he's good at this mathematics thing and he has history in banking and whatever right mm. all you need to do to us Mtuli Ngobe give us the facts give us the numbers give us the reality you don't need to politic you're not a politician mm. you're not a politician you are a scholar 
scholars deal with facts mtuli ngo is telling people zvakarongeka zvi zvakarongeka yeah zvi zvakarongeka it's very worrying because we are talking about a situation whereby we are in the middle of a pandemic civil servants pensions people are getting my 81 dollars mm my pension is it, no but it, it's it, it's the way Zimbabwe has been so for a very long time and i think that those are the legacies we get from from administration to administration so here's he was my he was my litmus test of um the finance department that i'm to linube and the amount of well the direction he's taking the country mm. who in good conscience in a pandemic after a year that was there was a drought um when people are generally suffering when civil servants are earning, are earning the, the least they've been in a really long time with doctors who go to school for six years uh, mm. striking for whatever reason um when civil servants are being told if you don't come to work you don't get paid regardless of vaccination or whatever in, in a pandemic and the first thing as a nation we do together with our budget is to build a statue that exactly. rotates and exactly. the second thing we do with our money is build a parliament building my guy i want to explain to you Now th- now take some readers you will, this will come sooner or later but you will see because obviously this is something we need to take seriously mm. I don't mind building structures yeah we are under statue and the parliament building are not going to generate revenue no. they are vanity projects you don't invest money in vanity projects they might have maria maka sa kumatogets bo try to try to draw maria with my it was a south africa can i go you get it would be going to cross some jira chinchi bro but ukaona when we're now taking resources that should be going to road rehabilitation to the civil service to paying the civil service that I'm, I'm like no when when i heard that jagarung i was like no no you might not want to nyebela zvine not nyebela but it was real sega road and all that that was brilliant sega road king george most roads are getting done the mbudzi overpass what not it is 7.5 million i don't know what that's going to cost per meter but i i, I don't think that is the cost of a structure like that maybe it's in tax but the amount of things we could do with the money that we hear being spent on these projects mm. is really confusing and kind of which is how when you're still fighting teachers and telling them if you don't come to work Bro. no pay what what is what's going well here so my teacher is actually a personal because my mom is a teacher and i see i mean bro you you used to you used to see like I've seen the difference between the level of effort that my mom puts in in the in her teaching because you know I've been old enough to remember from when she was in 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 in, in teaching school and like the house house I won't get into specifics so mm. I don't want to get my mom into trouble mm. but like she doesn't care now mm. like she doesn't care and she she really loves teaching she really but she's been battered enough that the passion is out of her now mm. she goes because she is contractually obligated <laughs> to go to but just on the on the surface level we're talking about a workforce that doesn't recognize the concept of leave days not on a financial because it's very easy to talk about matichas kubada mm. but let's talk about the work conditions we're talking about My, I don't remember the last time that my mother took leave from her work and that's a, if you actually mention to someone with my teacher and her leave it sounds ridiculous to someone because someone will tell you ah my teacher but I know varash but that's not that's 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 everyone chikoro yeah. chenda kavharwa <laughs> so everyone should be resting but a teacher should be able to say kuti e tell me other than kutora a month leave so not to zika na pachikoro kuti mdzidzi si wedu ha siku ya kuni green Either mopu am am this is for that term mm. or for that ngrigin do you know like do you know how ridiculous that is police officers kuti am dzim police ato ra leave like it's 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 they can't even not even on the ministry of they can't even fathom because every day they go to work there's a probability they go to make like 10 dollars can go sungira munhu mask can go sungira munhu chichi you know that's how they're making their money yeah. these days see with, uh, we're talking about people that are working in those conditions where a job means nothing anymore mm. when was the last time that you heard somebody saying kuti nkanda kuna data i'm soldier 
Canada couldn't and that's not even because Masoja Habadaru, but there is no respect in 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 them anymore. Mm. No one fears Munakawana Purisa. No one fears Kutama is Dona Dona Gonjo. It's 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 on a it's on a disrespect level mm. that you know this person is underpaid. You know that a situation might arise here, but not because of anything that I've done, but just because just because it's there is no deity in 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 green ukawona 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 ness i can figure those white ngrigini those people used to look cool ukona ka figure my white check it out shit put the ukona mpurisa i remember i remember because my father was a, was a, was a policeman right so you grew up knowing just like armed forces you know like specifics in terms of like Kumasoja kuna Air Force ni green. We used to compete over that. In Kanta kuna doesn't have Air Force doesn't have ni green. I knew of people that went to study law and then came kuchipurisa. Mm. Because it meant something. We 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 are I don't know maybe we're already there but we've entered the space where things somebody said something to me. Um, we did this episode of propaganda about human resources and jobs and ingredient. and someone left a comment I, I don't remember whether they left a comment or they sent me a message privately but they said something to the effect of how you know tunokura teaching the education is the key to success and then you grow up in them to realize that it really doesn't mean anything you're going to be unemployed and the people who attack kura teaching don't be Wacheta marombe at the people that what would chimdara chibaba do you know how confusing that is do you know how confusing that is kuti iwe wakasheta book ra kuno chipfura munhu pa zimpo spepe ano una kutema na 100 dollars a foot sake do you know how do you know how confusing that is because then what do you tell your child what do you tell your child i will say it because you know everything that our parents did is rooted in security right everything that we do we're trying to provide security for the you know oncoming generation but when you don't know what brings you security what do you do no i i think that's that now i have a i have a grudge against the boomers mm. or the boomers <laughs> to say guti i think the world they grew up in mm. is even even under rhodesia i'm not saying it was good yeah. it was good the transition from zimbabwe from rhodesia to zimbabwe There was still that safety net where financial institutions worked. Mm. But you get a loan, yeah. like a white, or a home. Yeah. Most of the guys who made their money were old, built their things when Zimbabwe was still Zimbabwe. Yeah. When, you know, we, were, we aren't the basket case we are now. Mm. What I blame them for is not seeing the transition of things are changing rapidly. Mm. Degrees, people got degrees. I was in Form 1, 2004. Mm. People I knew who finished up at six when got, got degrees, cousins, friends, and all that. Came back and you could see the worry on their face. Mm. And it made them like, no, but you've got the great, greatest security blanket ever. And they're like, it's not that easy. Mm. Because me, it's now me having to find and convince someone I've got a job. Yeah. This is where a friend of mine told me, he's like, a degree, you're not old enough, it was in Form 1. You're going to get to 16 years old and you're going to get your driver's license. That little blue paper you get, that certificate of competency, that's your degree. It means you're barely good enough to do the job. Or you just know enough to be possible. Mm. You're not yet at a level where they can actually pay you properly to do the job because they're going to have to retrain you. Mm. The boomers never saw that the world was going to come to a point where people like me, zero journalist training, will be talking to King Gandor, mm. one and a half years later, I'm starting. They don't know that people who were not developers, who did not go to, to com science, who did it on YouTube, and on the most highest paid people yep. in the industry. Yeah. They, they could never conceive of a world where the traditions they grew up in would be broken. They never saw a world like that happening. And you know what? It's scarier now, and I think for you it might be more pertinent because you're a father, that when your son grows up, what do you teach him? Do you get a degree? Do you follow your heart? Do you follow your passions? What? what? I don't know who soccer training is. <laughs> so, you know, sports is the one thing that will never get phased out, bro. True, true. I don't know if you're a good person. But you know it's 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 things that I'm going to have to figure out as a, as a as a as a parent you know it's very scary it's it's a weird thing because I was actually thinking to myself the other day what do I tell my child to be mass follow your passion go to because <laughs> I've seen the things that I've had to fight with 
But, but but are those fights not worth having though? Because I don't know if they are worth having. No, but look you, having no, no, but but I'm saying look where you are now. Like I mean, in terms of no, let's not overstate no, where no, no, I am. No, 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 no. I'm saying this is with 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 yeah. with being middle class myself. Yeah, <laughs> I'm saying that. Look at it as in, and by middle class, I'm not. It's not a jibe. It's it's just a, it's just the tax bracket. Relax. Yeah. I mean, in the sense that. Every battle we've had up until this point has led you to leave Zimbabwe mm. to seek quote unquote greener pastures, mm. to be able to do more than you could when you were here. Yeah. Like that ability to be a better version of who you were, who you are today than you were yesterday. Mm. I think that fight's worth having. Yeah, but almost everything that has happened in 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 my career, right, is unexplainable. But should it be though? It it should because the reason if it's explainable you can create a formula that you can replicate and tell someone oh tsika apa or tsika apa no, but, but you, were, you knew that everything was a risk, right? You were not as oblivious as to believe that things were going to just fall into your lap, right? Yeah. So that's but, the thing. No, but I'm saying, Kuti, in spite of all that, right? I would have wanted the thing that should have happened is you think you're dope. You go where people can appreciate your talent, right? You enter, you come back to your country and you enter an industry. Mm. Bro, I was I was setting up shows in my first year of doing comedy because I realized that no one was going to come and give me shows. Mm. That's ridiculous. No one should be doing that. Like I was setting up shows and inviting other comedians six months after starting doing comedy. Like, who are standing up, going begging, restaurant owners, a travel plaza, Shezandi, Chagadaro, Chagadaro. When there was a buzz, we started, we were not getting paid for any of the... Those are things that you shouldn't do because if you're worrying about... If you're worrying about setting up a show, when are you getting the time to write the jokes? Mm. You know, those are things that I'm saying, Kuti... It almost happens and I know so plan out my get a yuta and go what was but one guy would do I'm 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 talking about a situation whereby there is actually a form like if you decide to do comedy in South Africa, mm. right? You're going to see the comedy club guys and saying, Yo, I think I'm funny, they'll give you an open mic slot mm. for at least six months a year where they're trying you out. It's different comedy stages. That's what should happen. You're supposed to try yourself out. Not good within six months. Do you know what that does? Setting up a comedy show. Now you're having fights with guys that have been doing comedy because they're telling you, you stayed young. Like, come on. <laughs> you know, those are the, those are the yeah. things. That you're, and then within a year, you meet uh, most of the things that I can explain them because I said, no, you know, I'm, I'm good at comedy, right? But what about the next guy? Mm. We probably won't get, because maybe I'm, 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 I'm industrial. I never took no for, but what about the next guy that doesn't have it in him to fight with the restaurant owners about such and such or pe- bro we were doing shows at this comedy venue Pampas na mic all we had was a mic stand I still have the picture where it's there's not there's no thing we're just speaking to the audience sometimes it's two people sometimes it's those are the things that are that are that are, it's heartbreaking on a different level performing at a show that you organize that at two people. Mm. You know, those are the things that can make you quit and leave. And but you know, when 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 there is a when there is a formula, you can kind of like, oh, okay. But every every formula has been known to be to be because because the, the the game of life has no constants. It's not like science. Mm. The science has constants where mm. these things until we prove otherwise, yeah. they will forever be. At this constant, yeah. the game of life is different. There are ways in which you can be successful depending on your guile, your determination, and your verb. Mm. But you can never leave a formula like um, Paul Scholes, for example, mm. had no business being as good as he was at football. Mm. Being a ginger, I, there was a story about how Sir Alex Ferguson went to see him. I don't know who was sitting next to him. It was mm. it Nicky Bud or something? I uh, was like, no, look at that little ginger kid or whatever. And scores apparently scored a spectacular goal, and then he became, you know, was then included when he was going to be cut or something like that. Again, this is just the story as I remember it. Mm. But there is never so much of what you do for yourself relies on other people. Yeah. 
So you can never really say there's a formula because the kindness in the world you're in right now yeah. is a big factor, yeah. especially if you're trying to make it into con- digital content creation. Yeah. If you don't have people around you who give you a conducive enough environment to succeed, mm. it's going to be difficult. Yeah, but in Zimbabwe, it's just... To Zimbabwe, because there's no industry set up. There's yeah. no infrastructure. There are no bare bones. So good to, um, where do you go to rent a studio space? Now, yeah. if you go online, all you find is MMX. MMX's prices will kill you. They will destroy your life. Like, no solution center in my content creators. You're like, uh, who's paying for this stuff? <laughs> so, if there's no... Again, that, I think that's what... Those lessons mm. should be the formula. Yeah. To be like, yeah, no, I'm going to start an events and promotions company specifically for comedians. Yeah. I, these are the lessons I've learned as a, as a comedian coming up. I'd rather you guys not do the same thing mm. and just pull the resources from what we're doing. So, for example, even Texan. Mm. It's one dude who started it a while back. Yeah. And it's got, what, a bunch of people in it now. Yeah. And we're each learning from each other. Whoever came before is leaving the, the lessons they learned. Yeah. And it's becoming better. The, the rigging is getting a lot better. Yeah. So I think that that's, that's the thing. I think if your son does said be a comedian. Mm. Yeah, have a, have a, have a... It's like Jay-Z's kid. I hope he does, man. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope my hope child is an fine. Actor. He becomes an actor. Like a thespian. Because he's, he's going to be in England. Yeah. So yeah. Nah, I, I, I don't know. What I know is that at least, you know, I mean, he he's already won the fight of, like, he's British. I grew up in a police camp. If we're comparing. Yeah, he does not know struggle. Yeah, he, he hopefully will never know the struggle that I had. Mm. You know, could he, you know, he'll have all these options to choose from whether he wants to be a footballer, he wants to be an accountant, he wants to be a, he can, he can choose from, Isusu, I honestly uh, would love to sit here and say, as I chose to be a comedian or what. It sounds, you know, when, when you tell people that's the part they take out, oh, you dropped out from the But it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't one of those things that you like, ah, let me, you know, at the time that I made the decision, it's, it, it felt like, it felt like this is the only way that I could continue being me. It's felt like this is the only thing that's keeping me alive mm. in terms of, you know, you're very close to a big black dark pit where nothing makes sense. And then there's this glimmer of, about, okay, it's not go nice, mm. you know, because I was reasonably good at school, right? But it got to a time when, like, uh, I, I was breezing through you know, A, a level, what, 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 because I loved reading and Chagadaro, and I was very talkative. So even quite schools, you know, it's a law, you know, all my teachers are like, we're all, we're law, you were. So literature, literature. Then you get there, and then it, you get to a point where you have to apply yourself. You know, people are coming to you and saying, I was up until 3 a.m. reading S versus Makwanyani, or I was up, and you're like, the fuck? <laughs> I was on YouTube. <laughs> and I would have been on YouTube for real. Like I was on YouTube looking up, like getting caught in the rabbit hole because obviously rabbit on the free Wi-Fi. You'd mm. be like, oh shit, all mm. this Wi-Fi, what do I... But I, uh, you know, it came to a time when I had to apply myself and I just couldn't apply myself. Mm. And it wasn't because I wasn't intelligent enough. I was. I am. But it was just good to Ranga receive Rang. Yep. You know, so then came then came this uh you know, this glimmer of hope. So I hope good when it comes to, you know, all my children, it never has to reach a point because I always feel like if I had gone to a school that encouraged me to see could there is more to, you know, in terms of like in terms of curriculum, that was just beyond academics, mm. right? The same emphasis that is put on academics was put towards things like, you know, debating, you know, Toastmasters, you know. I probably would have seen this earlier and I probably would have uh, convinced, but then I rationalized it and think, you know, maybe those experiences are necessary. I just said to know that side and know, oh, you should do this. I just said, for real, for real, this is. Yeah, the, the opportunity is a school. It's it's that whole thing where we do, when you go to what they call A schools, B schools, yeah. A schools. I went to John's, so yeah. that stuff was there. Yeah, like the emphasis was put. I remember when we were in low six, they started making a more of a push of the arts. Yeah, they started putting more money into it, and yeah. people who loved it went gravitated towards it. People uh-huh. got a proper opportunity to become a musician. 
Mm. Or to, to, to start your musical, ed- musical education through that. Yeah. PE might be called a B school, but in terms of his musical infrastructure, it's probably one of the best. Yeah. Because the the litany of artists, the litany yeah. of, of, of instrumentalists that they come out of PE, mm. either professionally or vocationally or, mm. or uh, recreationally, is incredible. Yeah. When you then whittle down and you then you see, so this is why I look at my opportunity through a lens and like, without having gone through those experiences, even though you never made the most of them, mm. you can appreciate them now that they gave you that first exposure to be like, okay, even though if this fails, I've got this option that I know I liked doing this. Yeah. Maybe I can revisit it. When you imagine, you know, now I'm, I'm, I, I know I know a lot of people are going to think that I'm, I'm, I'm Salate, so. No, um, you are. It's on it, Bob. Thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> on it. <laughs> I put that in my chest. Oh. <laughs> so well, it's not. It's, is is it is is it a derogatory term? Oh, Limbikani is like a derogatory term. Like literally, I must say that. I'm like, dude. Limbikani has some salad. Has some salad. How do you start take Zim as like? I want to know. That that's a ghetto you teach me. You guys don't go some Zim salad. Masala, you guys don't say. How? No, that's impressive though. <laughs> Because it takes them as a very impressive institution. I've always assumed, Kuti, it started from it started from you know it's one of those garage stories <laughs> somewhere in somewhere in Borodeo Brook. Someone was like, "Let's <laughs> copy <laughs> and <laughs> Steve." Jo- so I'm not sure I'm still going to get it. I'm mute, 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 not in the bad way. But mute is that he never, or at least for long, as long as I've known him, he's never out of place regardless where he is. Mm. Ghetto, he's he just seems like he's part of the furniture. My boardroom, I've never seen him there, but I feel he's a little bit uncomfortable because I'm not meeting Nan, especially Nani Adi. Valentine and it's okay. But I'm saying all those opportunities when you when you go to mission schools now and you see Guti, crap. Yeah. There is not even a single instrument in this room. And not even have even if they have the instruments, there's none of the passion to 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 light something up in a kid who wants to learn this or do this professionally. Bro, out of the mission school. In the school that I went to How do I describe this to you in a way that might be? You know, the school that I went to was there were sections of it of the school, Angasna Fens. No, yeah, there were sections of it that, that was not Angasna Fens. A child could show up to school at 11 and they could leave in a tour. <laughs> like, Nipa Fens, get the ring Like, we're talking about. I'm talking about school is good. In a 5 p.m., some students running back on one of my teacher for growth point. Can you give me the name? You wouldn't even know it because it's in the depth of Shurugui. It's not. I'm not sure school is good. People talk about or bring up. Maybe, maybe I can visit. It's Rusnungu High School. Not the Rusnungu. No, you're thinking about the Rusnungu in Marondia. That's the Marusnunguko that I told you. Yeah, I'm okay. talking about the Rusnunguko in Shurugui. <laughs> it's, a, it's a school. All right. Tell me that this is a coin in. And mm. 2009, is it 2009? I went there for A level. I didn't go there for A level. I ended up there for A level. Oh, you ended up it's somewhere. a long story. Okay. <laughs> I ended up there for A level, right. and quite a term. He had a twenty-five dollars per term. That's how much school fees that you pay. And to give you context of the community, a good seventy-five percent younger singer go no bother about twenty-five dollars. Van white was zingwa, kunza no bother about twenty-five dollars. So you know that story and that our own daughter school fees do twenty-five dollars and I jika. Because I knew at the moment, like, nah, when it comes time to collect your school fees, to don't get any hundred dollars, yeah, I'm not going to That's the, how I say I ended up there is because the, I now went to the Trapi High School okay. from one to four, right? And then somehow, uh, when it came to form four, somehow I was convinced in my head that I would never need math in my life ever. And I wasn't very good at math. So when it comes to registering subjects, I didn't register math. Mm. Right? And that name scans on that. The name scans on one word very well documented. Even like I, I wrote my O-level exams in digital vapor day. Because I didn't score. 
another long story. It's not one nigga. Yeah. But so you know no one had high hopes for my A level results. But it turns out I passed all my subjects except for maths and the simple. Okay. Because in my head I was like I don't want this little thing to be the blemish. So you decided my, not to just register. I didn't even register. I didn't even go to the exam because I knew I would fail it. So I didn't want to pass everything and then that be the subject that I failed. I was like, no. I'm, but that didn't sit down, you know, with my father. I was like, the what what is <laughs> what is happening? What is happening here? Because he gets the transcript. Hapana means it's not even like you know how if you don't go to the exam, yep. they tell you it's missing. It wasn't there <laughs> <laughs> on the transcript. Like it wasn't there. So it was like, no, you're not going to A level until one year I met such. I was like, what? I had ten dollars and I could have buzzed and then I musha. And I enrolled myself at that school. Because no musha could so I went in the transcript. The Do- level of ingenuity. It involved. wasn't even ingenuity. You see, that's the thing. It wasn't when I was talking about my life is a series of happy mistakes, happy coincidences. I got a chance at ten dollars, young five dollars. But there. but it's, it's not a method of the madness. That's what it is. Because then again, then again, in retrospect, no, not even in retrospect. Yeah. Panic change who guide the jet. I won't go in the wig. So I ended up. I enrolled myself. Omosha. Uh, that's how I ended up at Rusno Gukas because it was like Kumusha Gwedu Panapa and then Kutkorogashina is like in town. So we'd walk to Nigrin and within a term they made me head boy because I was the only person who could speak English consistently. <laughs> <laughs> that's how the school ended up having a fence because I was like, yo, <laughs> I, was, I was building. <laughs> It's actually quite ridiculous. Like oh, I was yeah. I was I was I was doing fundraising projects, saying a fence around the school. I was telling I, I was putting it's actually quite ridiculous because Shurugi is a mining town, mm. right? Everyone in Shurugi is a scary person. <laughs> yeah. Because part time we're talking about people that are not mm. So we're having like twenty four olds my phone four. And so here I was the smart S Harare child, you know them get it, but can all of them Uri 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 That's the ridiculous. So I was going around saying no, but one from a Buddha my class I in in a single file in a chi 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 in a yo the niggas hated me. So wait, wait, you were the mutuli of Shiru. I was, but I I I <laughs> I was I was, but I was to 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 my credit, I was in character the whole time. <laughs> I was in character the whole time because if you go like if you go Shuru right now, my A level results. That's how I ended up at Rhodes because I did so well. Kusnungu High School, they gave me a scholarship to go to Rhodes. Your life has been one big fleece. That's <laughs> I did so well in Uganda Shuru District. My results are in the Shuru District <laughs> office. I was starting no. debate clubs no. in Green. I won. Um, I won the the debating competition in 2000 and well I can't remember what it was uh, 2009 2010 and the only reason why I didn't go I I won the district competition and the only reason why I didn't go to I don't know what comes after this is it province is it the only reason why I didn't go to that thing is because on the same day there's some guy who saw me at that debate and said yo we want to to have you come host it was this children's thing that was being done by Un- is it unicef or I, I don't remember one of these kumusha ngos that come and say to talk by green so they they came and pushed me i remember fielding calls and that but I, I was kind of like a shurugi superstar in green but those i'm saying that to say i don't remember why why i brought this up but i'm I just remembered, which now subconsciously I remember I was talking about sub, like subconsciously the things that happened to me. Where if I look back now, I'm like, I was always meant to be doing what I'm doing now, because even from the, even from the, from my time as a head boy, or from my time doing debate, or from my time, if I tell you, even when I was at Trapper High School, I was never in the debate team. 
I thought it was the most boring thing ever because the kids that were doing debate were APT, blah, blah, blah. I went to Blackstone <laughs> for primary school. I don't want to be part of... I don't want to be part of these... Ningrigin. So I never participated in it because it sounded very classist. Yeah. But look at me doing debate in, in Shurug. And now... Because now you are fighting. I was competing with kids from like Pakame High School, Tongogara. What's that? The CJR in Ninkrikini, in Gweru. Like those Ninkrikini. It was, it was also a point of pride now. Because it earned me street cred back in Shurugi. Because they were like, nah, we give him a pass. Because he's doing certain... Like I had, I had kind of like... It's very weird saying, but I kind of like the hood pass in Shurugi. Because... I wasn't the same because I was like, 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 I Hire a computer teacher and whatever they would have a teacher and my computers teach computers. We're talking about scores, right? What sitting, you know, mm-hmm. mama, you are learning in a classroom. Is such a pizza or roofing? You would you are sitting in a certain part mm-hmm. of Nigri. Oh, yeah, for a I think for some time we were in a storage closet that was meant to be some thing that had no windows. But we were having the time, I was having the time of my life. And I think those years were so formative to how I see things now because I think even in my stand-up, it allowed me to, it allows me to see things from as many perspectives as I can because I've lived different, different lives, so to say. The guys are on police camp. The guys are it had three years. The guys are in four years. The guys are where I was rubbing shoulders with Tuvana to my minister, mm. you know, and I'm on scholarship <laughs> stipend, you know. You you're trying to, you know, to mix and mingle. You are lying about what your parents do at home because you are feeling under pressure about how you ended up at roads. It was a very stupid thing. Now, in retrospect, I should have just told people we didn't drop a scholarship, you know. But somehow, in my mind, I thought we did. it was a. I shouldn't. I shouldn't really say. But I was there because I was smart enough to be there. These kids were there because they could afford to be there, you know. But it allowed me to see how they speak. Oh, this is what they think is important. Oh, this is so now. Almost all those things now, and I'm grateful to most of the friendships that I made there because. Some of you know my son's uncles and aunts are from that time. Mm. You know, I made some really good friends, and what it then did for my comedy is that you know it's a reflection of all these things. It's a reflection of all these lives. Somebody can come and say, "Oh, I feel represented here." Mm. You take different bits and pieces, or you know, fatherhood, or ghetto youth, or you know, being a Zimbabwean, or being a Zimbabwean in the diaspora, or being an. I'm that's the part that I'm really proud of. To say, you know, it's 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 Zimbabwean comedy. Yeah, it's Zimbabwean, <clears throat> it's Zimbabwean comedy in the truest sense of okay, I believe we can sell this to 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 other people now because I think that's that's what that's what most people based off the conversations that I've that I have in between, especially in between. Conspiracy Theory is my first show, my first special, and Prodigal Son now is. I remember prior to doing that special, somebody was like in the months leading up to it. There's a friend of mine, or their friend now. They were like, yo, I think it was prior to me doing shows in Blaue. Mm-hmm. They were like, yo, who yo? Will you be able to perform in Blaio? I was like, what do you mean? They're like, oh. Most of your most of your most of your jokes sound most of your jokes sound like Harari jokes. And for a moment it's uh, 
you know, it, it stuck between bothering me and not understanding what they meant. But, then I, but you're not from Harare, so how are you? How are you getting them? You know. But I got what they were asking, mm. and I realized that it's something that I'd intentionally been doing. That you know, when we get into the arts, most people there is a danger of wanting to impress a lot of people all at once. And I think that's where most of us fail. Mm-hmm. When I started, even now, I've always been of the belief that five people that believe in you to the extent that they can speak about you in your absence and say, I are greater than 20,000 people on Twitter saying that Yo, you need It's just fortunate that I have bought, you know. I'm going to break. I'm going to break. No, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. That communities in, in the world right now, and it's something I've been trying to tell every young content creator, are not built by transient and fleeting audiences. Mm. They're built by those 10 diehards who did never, never let go. Yep. Talk about every YouTube channel. Talk about every sensation that, that blew up in the world. Mm. It's a community that was able to influence other people to appreciate Exactly. It. Every community is now an inside joke that everyone wants to be part of. Exactly. So you've got to build in that way. And it, that's a really healthy way of looking at it. Yep. Because there are a lot of international content creators who are making... A lot of money have a lot of influence and have now become more liberal with how they do things simply because, like you said, mm. those five people were like, this Bro, guy's a guy. For a very long time, mm. I was afraid of being of going viral. Mm. I would have this fight with like some of my closet boys because they would be like, yo, why don't you put tags on your things? Why don't you say King Kandoro? And I was like, nah, it's, it's fine. Because my reasoning was my face is already in there. Mm. right? If somebody enjoys the thing enough, they will find... I don't know what I, what else the thing that I, the reason why I was doing that I was afraid of waking up with 500 more followers than I had the previous day because what that does is this if if somebody comes to follow you because of a viral clip that's what they want to see mm-hmm. they want to see that the next day they want to see that the day after that what happens if that's all you had yep now you are at a danger of disappointing somebody that you don't even know you're disappointing mm-hmm. you know there is now this pressure. So I wanted, I wanted to grow at a pace that was comfortable to me. But I realized that the downside to that, what it did for my career is that, man, there's very few people that get as much disrespect as I do. Because to... I never used to do like... I never used to do like interviews or... Because I was always like, I would let the work do the talking. But... People don't care. People, I think we 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 live at a time during a time where if you don't say what you're doing, and if you don't say it as often, mm. very few people, like beyond your community, will know or even care. Mm. That's how we end up with the list here. With the people who say top ten comedian, and you will see my TT on that list, and you will see, and you like. How is my titi a comedian? How is how, how is uh, there is so many other lists, but my titi is the only person that I can disrespect <laughs> at this particular point. You think it's not previous? No, it's I've never met her. But the, the my thing is, I know that even she, I don't think she even calls herself a comedian. Mm. The reason why I say that is because. When somebody is a comedian, there's intentionality to what they do. There's intentionality to the content that they are putting out. Mm. It might not look that... Madam Boss is a comedian. There can be arguments about how funny the stuff is, but she is a comedian, mm. right? The skits that she put out are comedic in nature. They make a lot of people laugh, right? Mm. When somebody does something that is construed as funny to certain people, that's not necessarily comedy. Barack Obama said things that are funny at certain points. Our president says things that are funny. Is he, are these people comedians? The thing that hurts me now, the thing that hurts our industry is when now Bro, I know a lot of 
I know a lot of young comedians that are working hard, right? That will probably never get the same attention that so and so are getting, mm. right? Because of that person getting that much attention. Because what that does is, there's people that might not necessarily identify with comedy or with socialite X, right? Yeah. And then they construe that to be comedy, and then they will say, "Can I read comedy?" Do you see what that does? Mm. Because that person has 150,000 followers, 100. Mm. They have now put a black mark on Zimbabwean comedy, but they're not even a comedian. There's people that will say, "There's people that will, that have never come across my stuff." Because they ruled out Zimbabwean comedy because they came across that being construed as Zimbabwean comedy. They're like, I can't really do radio. I don't want. Can I read Nigrigini? There's people that I still come across people that are in the entertainment or that are adjacent to the comedy industry. They'll be like, King And do you know how ridiculous that is? <laughs> it is the way you said that. They're like, King To your face. Uh, serious. You saw that reps? <laughs> Because it's now, it's now, uh, it's, there's a ripple, uh, they, 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 there's a, um, uh, it's not a ripple effect. It's like there's a, there's a chain happening. Because mm. what that does is these people now, they hog the, the, the headlines, mm. right? They are the ones when all Tarwa, Pa H Metro, they're the ones on Torah, Sunday Mail, they're the ones on Nigrigina. And mm. I don't know what really goes into in, in the newsroom, but I would, my theory is there's never going to be three stories in the same Sunday Mail about comedians. I didn't like They are going to go with whoever is top billing. Saga, if it's a race between King Kandor and my titi. <laughs> My titi is going to win. Yeah. Andy. Repeatedly. Repeatedly. And my antics are around by the report, but we are talking about. So, how are the people ever going to know? King and Dor. Vanita Mashos. How are they ever going to know? It's not what I'm very, you know. So, we, we are fighting for, you know. We are fighting for, 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 for our lives in terms of like this. There's so many things that people are fighting. Like, Bro, these incredible young comedians doing amazing things. Amazing things. We'll probably never get the light of day. Not even Panana, H Metro, and Ingrid, but when I was in celebs, show, because you post that person, and people are like, read. Read. Mm. So I don't know, man. I don't know, what, I don't know what needs to change. I don't even know how we ended up here. Oh, I know. Listen, it's a journey, and then we're here for it. We, 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 we need to put a bullet point so that we can keep coming back to I don't even know how we ended no, up. But I, I like what you said about, I think the media has played a very important role in the marginalization of people who actually are doing the work that some people purport to do. Because you can say that influencers or people who are outrage merchants mm. um, are what mm. represent a field. I think it's incorrect. I think it's... The, the point that the media is quoting is clicks. People are doing things for clicks. Mm. So you need to draw as many eyes as you can to, to your publication or to your problem or whatever. So Kandoro might not make much sense to the to the Herald. Yeah. In the art section. Well to the Herald it's clear why he might oh, not. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. But then you did say that <laughs> Mangwana was a peace offering. <laughs> <laughs> And to be honest, like, actually on that point, I think it's it's If someone who was a layman listened to what you're saying in the mm. Bible, son, mm. they'll think you're being necess- you're being an agitator unnecessarily. Yeah. But the thing is, is there is a delicate balance to play. Yeah. That there are good things they do and there are bad things they yeah. do. Now, when you look at outrage merchants, they get the clicks and the draw because they're able to pull people yeah. because of of the acts that they do. Yeah. And like what you said when you said when you when you go viral and someone follows you mm. for that viral act. Yeah. You're kind of responsible for continuing that nonsense exactly. for as long as, and you lose yourself in why you started exactly. this. Exactly. So I kind of get why these influencers then go down the route they do exactly. because it's expected of them. Exactly. But when you change direction, how many times do you hear people get upset when a band changes its sound or when, when Kendrick doesn't release an album in two years and he said Bro. 2021 is going to be my year? And now it's 2022. And Kendrick fans are in a problem because, you know. They, are, they know their guy. 
Yeah, they know the guy, but it's yeah. like for for people on the outside who expect him to be this god exactly. level MC. Yeah, it's like we want he, we want him to keep at pace with what everyone else is doing. Exactly, but that's not his that's game. That's not that's not what he does. You can't you can't put Jay Z on a timeline. Neither can no. you put Kendrick on a timeline. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Mm. Like remember, we, you can spend two years, and it's not like they're working on crap. Yeah, they're working no, on something yeah. that. Look at Kendrick. Oh, here's an example, and I and I and my sadness is coming out because mm. I, I can't give you a Sungura reference. <laughs> <on this. laughs> but, fine. but Kendrick is in the sense that Kendrick's every album he's had has been a hit. Yeah, there's no rapper who's batting 500 yeah. or 100 like Kendrick, where yeah. everything single thing is going out of the park. Yeah, what is that down to? It's the process. Yeah, if he was creating content at the same level as 2008, Lil Wayne, mm. this is a different situation. Yeah, yeah, you'd run out of a level of drugs that need. You know, to sustain that, it's it's yeah. different. But there are not enough yeah. preludes in the world to, to to get to that point. But I hope I hope now not to sound. I'm looking at the camera, not to sound like I'm I'm, I'm trying to, to toot my own horn here. But I hope that independent publications, the mm. Texans, the Magamba, the Open Parlies, and all that, mm. are a vessel that can push quote unquote true artisans. Yeah. To get the kind of notoriety and recognition that they deserve. I mean, it's not enough just to give them notoriety, but to talk to them, talk about them so people can understand yeah. what it is they do. Yeah. No, I, 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 I do hope so, man. But, but you know, there they is, you know, people in the media that are really trying, but it's, it's, it's really one of those situations where, you know, they end up getting outnumbered greatly. But, I mean, it's, it's what we're talking about is our audience is not... Is not one million people, one billion people. Mm. The guys who keep coming back keep coming back, and they keep our lights on. Yeah, and it's like we're we're showing them something cool that we discovered. Yeah, like we found we 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 did this thing that's interesting. Yeah, like we did a podcast about Spider Man No Way Home, mm. and I obviously can't release the numbers. But when I sort of like, I did not know this many people would listen to an hour sort of conversation of me primarily yeah. bitching about the movie yeah. that it was a waste of 10 bucks yeah. because this movie had been spoiled yeah. since, All right. since the trailer came out and people yeah. knew yeah we know it's going to happen yeah. and we're just waiting for the things that we knew were going to happen to happen so if we, if there are enough people that can listen to a Zimbabwean guy yeah. and, and two of his friends yeah. rambling about a movie and then we tell them about this dude yeah. and you, you're famous enough you've got thousands of followers on Twitter don't act like you're not known I mean am I? please you you are the closest to be verified in this room. You know, <laughs> do you know? Do you know? Do you know? What? That, that that whole thing is fleeting, man. Like, I mean, it's 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 very nice. It's very. It has its moments, you know, where you're like, oh, being 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 known is nice, but really and truly, it's something that I've tried that I that I've tried, and I hope to keep. Ignoring for as long as I can. The reason why, because I can see how you can get into your head about about that. And man, I have enough things to worry about. The thing that that I really want to do is just because I really love comedy more for anything, but the power that it has in terms of like communicating, communicating things, mm. right, bro. People don't even realize like how therapeutic it is. Like when I get to tell like stories, right? Like when people come, when people come to watch Prodigal Son. Those are ideas that I've had for two years. Mm. At some point, they become a burden because you can't think new things until you've dumped these things, right? Prodigal Son existed in my head, fully formed the way that people are going to see it on video, like that in a haphazard state, it starts hitting your head a little because you're like, oh, it keeps changing. Like, okay, this, so I'm like, okay, let me just dump because I know the, the moment I shade with someone, I can't shade again. Mm. I can't pretend that this is new stuff anymore. <laughs> it's old. So let me get, you know, let me get to a place where I can share. And the, the, the thing with comedy that I've always loved is, you know, when people make that conscious decision of coming to watch you, to hear what you have to say, you can't waste people's time by saying things that don't matter, mm. at least to you, right? So that's why I had a conversation with um, with someone. I was like, yo, what was your favorite part of the show? I was like, man, I liked... And then this started going off. But, oh, I liked, I liked the connection with the prodigal son. I liked... 
I liked A, B, C, D, I liked what, but I got worried. Uh, there was a time when you got serious uh, and I got worried. Oh, is this guy getting, is this guy getting the laughs per minute that he needs? I was like, what? Because <laughs> I knew what they were saying, but I was like, what? <laughs> It was just fun. And then it became this very dope conversation where I was explaining to them now that, you know, that's, uh, can I swear here? Of course. Yeah, I, I'm not going to swear now. I'm now no, <laughs> very conscious. Yeah. The only difference was like, nah, that E. Yeah. Next time, next time, next <laughs> yeah. I was like, nah, it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. But it was just, you know, it was a reflection of how much into the show they were in, like how much, because... You know, everybody that is, everybody that I've talked to, to just ask like, yo, what was your favorite? Everybody has a different thing. But it, it was just interesting to hear somebody think, with, oh, they were worried about me. Because I think it's the time when, it's the time when I was talking about colonialism and yeah. racism, mathematics and, 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 and stuff. And Because I remember I was watching the edit in the, I didn't hear it on the day, but somebody shouted, Wakuanza Chokwadi, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard it in the edit, I was like, so they they even, I was like, I was like, I, I had to explain to them, like that that whole thing, there's this, I don't know if you've heard this laughs per minute thing. I've never heard that before. So in comedy, there's this, there's this almost, I don't know if it's theory or it's a thing to strive for, but Comedians generally strive to get as many laughs per minute as possible. So in 60 seconds, you want to hear as much ha-ha-has as possible, right? That says you're doing well. So when you're speaking, because, you know, in five minutes, people don't realize how long a minute is until they do stand up. <laughs> in front of people, it's a while. They don't realize. So that laughs per minute thing, the more laughs you're getting per minute, the more you're doing well. Mm. So I had to explain to them, like, yo, that shit doesn't matter. Mm. Like, it matters when you're starting out in comedy and you're still trying to convince yourself and the audience that you're funny enough to pay attention. But if somebody has paid a ticket to $10 so don't to come to your show, they know you're funny. Or even if they haven't watched you, they believe you worth. I'm saying even if you're not funny, yeah. you're not giving them their money back. No, but, but so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But more importantly, when somebody's coming to that kind of show, where you are supposedly doing the show for an hour, it's more about the coherence of the story mm. than the laughs per minute, because there is a danger to sacrificing much bigger picture mm. while chasing laughs per minute. Because if you see the way that show is, nothing is accidental about that show. Nothing, things are made to look spontaneous and green, but I promise you, 95% of the things that are happening there, they are written down from the heart to, to, to some of the things that I realize that people might not even, people might not even pick up on. Because but you might pick up on it when you're watching the video, but in real time you might not. Because I don't know if you remember, if you guys were already there, but there is that in the opening when I was talking about the language that Zimi Hip Hopers lose, yeah. and how there is a part about David Chifunis and how he does the you know. Mm -hmm. If you notice, I was saying you know the whole time. The whole time that I was doing that bit. I was punctuating everything. But the joke now is, you know, so what, what is it communicating? The difference between then and where I am now. Yeah. So it's, those are the kind of things where you, you, there's layers to it, right? Mm -hmm. When I'm now doing the show, I'm not going to sacrifice that, oh, I'm going to travel from here, then we're going to walk on people to the show, check what's happening, go into Christianity, move from Christianity, go into blessings, move from blessings, go into racism. When I move into racism, go into colonialism, then there's a blank part here about Nick Mangwana. Then I'm going to come back here about the politicians home. Then I'm going to move into my family. Then I'm going to come back. I'm not going to sacrifice doing last a minute because by the time I reach that serious part, 
I've already convinced you that the show is funny enough. Yeah. You get By the time we go to the serious part there, there is no one who's worried about oh Mariangu ya endera zviripwere. Do you get what I mean? Like you're not you're not you're not thinking in my mind <laughs> If the show ends now, I will ask for a refund yeah. because you've laughed enough. Like by that time, I've done the smooth story. Yeah. Right? Mm. You've laughed what you possibly think is the hardest. Right? So why not use this time we are here now? Why not have some some something that you can actually take away mm. and say okay, if there is ever anything that will cuz we're trying to create agitation, right? You If you watch if you watch Dave Chappelle mm. if you watch Bill Burr mm. there is something that you always take away it might not be the thing that the next guy is taking away it might not even be an important thing mm. it might be the thing that oh Bill Burr is married to a black woman you know Yeah, it scared the crap out of me. You know, it might, it might be those those he's things where you're like he's white, he's the palest man in the exactly. world. Exactly. Like how? And you're like how? You know, it's 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 those things there's always so it's like you're always trying to give, you know. Yeah. For me in 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 my shows, I'm 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 not trying to get as many laughs per minute as possible. I'm trying to have as many questions as I possibly can. That's the thing that keeps me up at night. Like, mm. okay, am I asking what I need to ask? Because going back to that whole therapy thing, mm. these are things that genuinely bother. Like, the, my stand-up comes from things that genuinely bother me. So wait, wait, wait. Let me get this right. You're mm. crowdsourcing us for ten bucks. Yeah. So you can get your kicks. It's, so you can then go home to your wife and child. It's a weird like, therapy nah, session. Boy. Like, oh, <laughs> got paid <laughs> for this therapy. It's a, it's a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, it's, 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 it's like scam therapy. <laughs> you don't scam therapy. You, a, a proper, proper. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things where, like, if you see the bit about, like, you know, the royal family, mm. those are like real questions that I had. I'm like, why is this thing still in existence? And then, like, I can ask this. So it goes back to that the importance of comedy thing. You couldn't ask that question anywhere else. Mm. You couldn't go mu 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 kutin roof and say, "But why is the royal family still in existence?" <laughs> yeah, you can only ask that question shrouded in humor mm. because it becomes more palatable now. Mm. By the time people realize what you just asked, they are caught up in the awkwardness and in the laughter of, "Oh shit!" <laughs> But they're like, "Wait a minute." But why? You know, by the time you're talking about like that whole the 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 the, 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 the thing about adultery versus cheating mm. versus politics and But that, that that was a master stroke though. I actually left that out intentionally for my review. That's where the one star went because yeah. I couldn't purposely talk about it. But that is true. Cheating. But you cheating see, them more there. You see. <laughs> you see the, the Nicholas, uh, th- those kind of things where you're like, hmm. But it's, it's the old saying that the court jester was the only one who could ever speak the truth in front of the king. Mm. So he was the only person with the freedom at court. That's comedy <coughs> legacy. Yeah, that it gives us the opportunity to speak about the truth, you know, veiled in levity. But it's no less serious. Yeah. Like it's still pretty exactly. bad. Yeah, yeah. So when's the video coming out? When I've left. Excuse me. What? When I've left. You see, the thing is, the thing that I've that I've exaggerated is how bold I am. I am strategically bold. You see, that's what a lot of people mistake this about me. They're like, "Kandore, courageous." No, nah, I'm not. I'm just courageous enough. You see, so you know, I probably released Ndaku, you know, on my layoff to Ningrigin. Flight even a No, yeah, it, uh, I won't tell you. I won't say where the layover is now. <laughs> no, but there is a layover. Yeah, is it north or south? You see, I'm going to try, <laughs> trying to catch you, but I'll, I'll probably list it when I know for certain. <laughs> I, I'm not coming. I'm not coming back now. But 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 yeah, no. But the, we, it's currently being edited now. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 very very excited to share. You know, to share with people, this because 
For yeah. distribution wise, where we're gonna see it? Streaming services, um, video, buy a DVD. In the I think you know it, it. It will definitely be on demand. Something video on demand. But something. I'm, I just uh, that's that the part I need to figure out where wherever makes me the most money. For like a strive, we can drop on Netflix. Ones, you know, protocol sign. I heard you guys are friends. I don't know if that was true, but with strive. Yeah. We're on the street, say. No. <laughs> <laughs> Never bought a Netflix yet. Do you know what? I, I don't know if I don't know if I don't know if uh, a relationship with that guy would. I think that relationship with Strive would be very counterproductive, man. Because then I, I would lose all street credibility. Because I wouldn't participate in eco cash jokes, you know. <laughs> You lose all that. I don't think you. I don't think a friendship with Strive is worth that, man. I don't think if it's worth uh, m- not making fun of Econet. I don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's. I don't think it's worth that. Because I'm yet to see somebody who said Strive. I can't be some judge. I can't do some. I'm yet to see that person. I don't know if that Strive can be some judge. I mean, I'm not on the here and there, but <laughs> <laughs> but who else? <laughs> <laughs> Who else? You know what? You know what? You know what? We'll talk after. <laughs> Who else? You know what? Kador, <laughs> you won't like you said you can talk. It's been one hour, <laughs> 40 minutes. Yeah. And we've got 20 minutes until it runs out of juice. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you very much for joining yeah. us. Um, no, th- I don't even know what we were talking about, but we talked. Yeah, and we I talked enjoyed about. I enjoyed this so much. I enjoyed, I enjoyed this so much. Man, I, I, I feel like I, I hope no one will be frustrated, you know, watching this. Oh, no. Listen. Because... No, I mean in terms of because w- uh, there's something that we're doing, we were hope scorching. Because so I hope nobody's frustrated in the sense that they reach a point where they're like, oh, I want to know more about this. Then we take a left turn to. It. <laughs> so it might be frustrating in that regard. That's they're like, oh, where's that Shuruk story? That, like, that's oh. always, yeah, I guess uh, there, yeah. there's always. You can always, always do, we're gonna always do a part two on Zoom, you know. <laughs> Or during my I was layover. going to invite you to my home, but now I'm not going to. Ah, if you are, if you are, if you are, if you are happy about Vakomana also knowing where you stay. Jesus. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, what uh, take, take, <laughs> take that risk. I mean, it's. Do you know, but you know what that does? Yeah. The thing about Vakomana knowing where you stay, it gives your life a certain level of. But you've got 24 hour guards, like. For me, I think it would be really good because I know I'm safe. Yeah, but it gives your life a certain level of excitement. You know, you're looking over your shoulder, bro. It's it's there is a certain level of you know you can pretend with you're in a James Bond. You like you see someone with an oversized suit. You are like what's happening here? But the, the tricks at hiding are not really good. No, uh, they don't hide. They don't need to, to be honest. Yeah, no. because if they when they do decide, like today's your day. Yeah, sort of. Like, yeah, yeah, over, like just, yeah. Just, just yeah. I know Vakumana. I remember a time when, you know, eh, I don't know so so. Hey, well, no, you know what? We'll leave, we'll leave them for part two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Kandoro. Thank you yeah, so much, man. You can speak. <laughs> One hour ago, I think I'm going to restrict it on stage. Thank you, Sinia Maria. You don't keep us there the whole day. <laughs> yeah, man. Eh, uh, the. the let me not. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed, I enjoyed this.